today we have the final round of Strixhaven spoilers. We have Witherbloom, I believe, at the last college. Some interesting cards here. I think for the most part, the majority of the interesting cards that I was particularly interested in were Lorehold, which is funny because I would like to think you saved the best for last, but we had it all on the front end of it. But maybe that's just me being biased with the red and white cards being pretty sick and unnatural from like a Boros point, Boros point of view. Anyways, first card we have is the Biblio, the Biblioplex, which is very reminiscent of Library of Alexandria. For any of you who have played Library of Alexandria, it was essentially a must play, which is why I was banned in EDH. You either play it or it's kind of like Soul Ring actually at that point. Soul Ring now is basically took that spot. Library was for most decks where you wanted card advantage and it was only in a land, so it was very cheap to do. This is essentially like that, and I really like this. Uh, definitely looking to put this in any deck. I think I'd want to build a deck around it, kind of. I think I really like this idea of having a like, super cool utility land. The art looks amazing. Imagine going to that library. Like, how many floors are in there? Like, how big that dome is. It's, it's like a skyscraper. It's actually kind of crazy. So it has tap, add one, colorless. It's fine. 2 mana and tap, so essentially 3 mana because it counts itself, or if you're counting itself. Look at the top card your library. If it is an instant or a sorcery card, you may reel it and put it into your hand. If you don't, you may put it into your graveyard. Activate this ability only if you have exactly 0 or 7 cards in your hand. So it has the same drawbacks as Alexandria, which is cool, and also not cool, of course. Having 7 might be a feat for perhaps maybe red decks, white decks maybe. Although getting to zero might be a little easier, this does require you to essentially make a maybe perhaps instant or sorcery based deck. However, because if you don't have instant or sorcery in the top of your library, this just fixes your draws. So even if you don't have a sorcery instant based deck, putting something in your graveyard that you don't want on the top of your library is probably helpful sometimes. Although it's probably better in your hand because it's a little safer than being in your graveyard. Still, very cool effect. I think this card will be less played than War Room. Which is weird because I do like the art better than War Room, and it looks a lot better than War Room, but eh, I still think we'll be played that much compared to War Room. I I'm definitely going to put it in the deck. I think the fact that it has the 0 to 7 cards in hand might be a huge thing to play around. Um, this is going to require you to play a little more reserved, or require you to go Hellbent. So there's like no no way you can play like combo with this, because usually combo wants to have you know their combo pieces in hand, which usually isn't 7 cards. And usually isn't zero cards, right? Because you have zero cards in hand, you're not getting your combo. So this means it's going to help aggro decks and it's going to help control decks. If there's such things like a spell singer aggro deck, maybe, maybe there is. Um, this is going to be a cool card. I like, I like this card. It's going to be definitely cool. If you want to play War Room, I think you should play this card. Uh, if you have that aggro or you have that control based deck. But yeah, tell me what you think about this card. I think it's interesting. Next up, we have a few other cards I think are particularly interesting that I looked at. However, I don't remember seeing this three color one right here. Blood Researcher. Okay, not that interesting. Looks like some draft chaff. <laughs> so today we have Pestilent Cauldron Artifact with tap discarded card. Create a 1 1 black pest. If you guys don't know, pests, when they die, you gain a life, which is different from Golgari, which will probably usually drain you, drain you a life. One tap, each one mills X cards with X amount of life you gain this turn. Okay, exile four cards, four target cards from a graveyard. Draw a card? Four target cards from a graveyard and draw a card for four mana. That's probably expensive in EDH. Definitely expensive in EDH. I don't know what kind of deck would want this. You can exile your own cards, but that's definitely not worth it, right? This is probably like a hate card for maybe standard. It seems a little too costly for EDH. Let's look at the sorcery, sorcery part though. Restorative Burst. Sorcery return up to two target creature land or planes or cards from graveyard right to their hand. Each player gains four life. Exile Restorative Burst. It's kind of neat. It's good against burn if it wasn't five mana. <laughs> there was getting like a burn deck in standard. That's super expensive. I don't know. I don't know if a deck wants us in standard or EDH. I'm feeling against draft chaff. But maybe the mill part is pretty strong. You can't really mill yourself. You discard your own card, then you're going down cards just to make a pest. Probably not worth it. You can mill your opponents. But yeah, this doesn't seem too good to me. Doesn't seem too good, but cool art. I like the art. It's definitely interesting. Interesting shenanigans going on there. 
Next up, we have a Demigoth, which is a demon of some sorts. Demigoth Woe Eater. Four mana, one black, green Golgari, or creature demon. At the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice creature. Whenever you sacrifice Demigoth Woe Eater, each opponent discards a card, and you draw a card and gain two life. Whenever you sacrifice... So eventually, you want to sacrifice itself. And when you do, you're going to essentially... Oh, wait, 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 wait. This may be better than I think, because I usually, like, after a few hits, people are start chump blocking with it. And if they're not making, like, fodder to chump block with, they're using cards out of hand, this is just card advantage. Right? You hit you hit one of their blockers, they're down a card, you still have your card on board. Then you sacrifice this, they discard a card, and then you draw a card, so you get their card, this card back. It's kind of like card advantage for aggro. This is a huge beast, too. Interesting. Is this... Is this close to being... A wandering archaic. Oh, I'm interested in the lore text. I'm not sure if this is like a wandering archaic that turned evil. Like corrupted by black mana or something. I'd be interested in seeing that that's part of the lore. I wonder if there's actually lore for this set. I don't know. I assume there's some with like Killian, the way he's depicted on some arts of the card. Arts in this set. But this is an interesting card. This is a huge. Four mana. I think this is like bigger than most cards from. Um, what was that one set with the Bonders Prodigy Kinnan was in? Ikoria? This is like better than most creatures there, and this is uncommon. That's kind of crazy. Anyways, I think that card will be played. If you're playing Golgari, Aggro, I think that card will be played. Well, even a little bit. Just a little bit, maybe. Next up, we have... Ooh, that next one to the left of the black card is pretty interesting. Auric Warlock. Two black, black. The creature human warlock that has tap search your library for a card put it in your gay red and shuffle your library if it's in the sorcery put a plus one counter on auric warlock so it's a tutor tutor on a stick out one and two mana stick that's neat a little slow but that's neat that's cool well if, if a deck wants to play in tomb and they're playing high to low power you could play this neat card to have nothing really much to say about it it does help with what does it help with I don't think you want to play it in standard, but it does help with EDH, EDH decks that want in tomb effects. Neat. Not much to see here. Pillow drop warden. What's a pillow drop? I saw that before. Two and tap sacrifice the warden. Return target insert sorcery card from your to your hand. Activate only as sorcery. Jeez, it's four mana. Spirit dwarf. <laughs> Spirit dwarf. Eh. I'm not good. Ooh. Containment Breach. Three mana, destroy target artifact or enchantment. If his mana value is two or less, create a pest. That's fine. Oh, we've got another Demigoth Titan. This is why I'm wondering if it's Archaic, because it's got those six hands. And we know the Archaic has six hands. I wonder, maybe the Archaics and the Demigoths fight. Gosh, I want to know what Lord Binding These things are sick. So, four mana, similar to the last one. It's a little less restrictive, I would say. Arguably. Except it doesn't have a colorless, which is, I think, yeah, a little less restrictive. But it's at rare. Whenever Demigoth Titan attacks or blocks, sacrifice a creature for an 11-10. So it needs to land twice to kill. Compared to the other one, it needs to land three times. Probably worth it. Yeah, this is, this is sick. This is crazy strong. Bigger than most creatures in Korea, by the way. <laughs> sick card. Sick card. We have the campus. We have, oh, Harness Infinity. I saw this one, but I'm not sure what to think of it. It's seven mana, aka one colorless, a black, 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 green, green, green. And exchange your hand and graveyard. Exile Harness Infinity at instant speed. This is sick. If you can mill your deck and then get whatever you want from your graveyard to your hand with this, you can just combo off. It's at instant, by the way. I feel like this is really close to being just like a ad nauseum effect. Except ad nauseum doesn't require you to have a, the extra step. Or this requires you to have like that one extra step. It's like ad nauseum with extra steps. This is a sick card. Art is sweet. Probably being played in EDH somewhere. I, I would imagine. It's such a strong effect. All you need to do is just play your cards, get them in your graveyard, and just play this, get your cards back. Too bad it exiles itself. <laughs> They're, they've learned. They've learned. This is a sick card. Probably high power and blow. Like, I don't know what card you want to put things in your graveyard. Maybe 
that one druid, if you don't have the same, if you, until you get like a land that you've already hit before, I forgot what it's called. Maybe that druid in this for some sort of crazy two card combo. I forgot the druid's name. Uh, Dina, Soul Steeper, black and a green, legendary creature, Dryad Druid, Dryad Druid, Dryad Druid. Whenever you gain life, each one lose one life, sacrifice another creature, Dina. Gets X plus zero until in a turn where X is the sacrifice creature's power. She's a 130, interesting. Not as aggressive, I figured it would be. You gain, whenever you gain life, each one lose one life. Whenever you gain life. So you want small bursts of life for this. Not too interesting, to be honest. But it's fine. It's fine. Got Sedgemore Witch, two and a black creature, human warlock menace with pay three life for ward. That is a counter to spell unless you pay three life. Whenever you cast a copy of an instant or sorcery spell, create a pest for three mana. This is probably good for an aggro spell singer deck in standard. I think if Magecraft is played, this will probably be played like in a black, maybe red based spell singer decks. This is a sweet card. Ooh, Plum Forbidden. I saw this card and thought it was pretty cool. As an additional class to cast a spell, you may sacrifice one or more creatures. When you do, copy the spell for each creature, sacrifice this away. Draw a card, lose a life. So this is like that um, storm-ish kind of effect. I think it's really cool. Being in black. So we have one for blue. Or we have one for red. We have one for white. That is like storm cards with a, at two mana. That is like, this is the black one. The red one is grape shot. And the white one is the vigilance and the counter one. Yeah, these are sweet to have. More storm options for people playing storm. A lot of people get like think Wizard Hate Storm, but like this is obviously like a storm card. You can have to build a huge board for this. I'm assuming you just eat pests with it and then it nullifies the lose one life part. I mean, unless you're playing against white or black, like the deal, I mean, maybe even red. Like, no one's gonna be killing those things. It feels so bad to kill it because, like, all you do is gain a life from killing it. The opponent only gains one. Like, there's not much of a. If you're playing aggro, there may be just more incentive to kill it. But other than that, I don't think I don't see much people like, trying to kill those things. They're actually gonna be like super pest. Like it's gonna be a pest, super pesty to kill them. I don't know. All right. We also have Callus Blood Mage, Tuna Black Creature, Vampire Warlock. When Callus Blood Mage enters the battlefield, create a one one pest. Draw a card, lose one life. Exile target player's graveyard. Two one. This is a good sideboard card. It's a mythic rare. I have no clue why. But I'm fine with that. I'm fine. Probably be played in sideboard, I think. It's dream enough for a 3 2 over two bodies. Also, you draw a card and you exile some stuff from, like, for Titans. Yeah, this is a cardboard. Cardboard quality. Or sideboard quality. <laughs> Next up, Poet's Quill, one in a black artifact equipment. When Poet's Quill enters the battlefield, learn. It also has one in a black. Creature gets plus one plus one when it's equipped, and it has lifelink. Pretty, pretty cool. Why lifelink, though? Why would a quill give lifelink? Maybe menace? I don't know. Lifelink seems kind of weird. Or maybe make it, like... ETB draw a card as well. I don't know, it seems kind of weird. Not really as like thematic as I had figured it would be. It's fine. We have Blex Vexing Pests. Other pests, bats, insects, snakes, spiders. You control get plus one plus one. When Blex Vexing Pest dies, you gain four life. So it's just a big pest. <laughs> uh, search for Blex, two and a black, black. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may put any number of them in your hand. Rest upon a library and an order. Lose your life for each card. Put your hand this way. Eh, it's ad nauseum, right? Except with less steps. <laughs> this is a fine card. I don't think it will be played too much, if anywhere. But it's cool. Maybe if there's like a pest deck, an animal deck. If you have like spiders, bats, insects, and snakes in it. This could be like a tribal deck. It'd be kind of cool. Kind of weird though to have blacks there. I, I would figure you'd want something else. But that's fine. Eldros Witherbloom, five black and a green for Elder Dragon with flying. Also, at the beginning of each upkeep, create a 1 1 pest. Pay 10 life, untap all lands you control, activates only once each turn, 4 4. 
This is cool. Definitely a lot of incentive to play past this, which I think is what will be needed for like more internal formats, aka EDH. I thought 10 life would be pretty steep, but if you have ways to gain life in black and green, which those colors do, this will probably be not too bad. Untapping all your lands too. I don't know why we'd untap all your lands in this case though. Of course to use activated abilities. I mean, just use anything you want, but it's like, what are you going to play in a deck like this that wants you to untap all your lands? Like all the activated abilities, or all the uh, past cards that we saw don't really have too much in the way of needing mana. They sort of enter and create pests. I don't know. It's interesting. It's still like ramp, which is super strong. Untapping all your lands is really strong. But you need pests, right? Or at least some sort of life gain. I don't know. That'd be a cool card though to play. Uh, all right. We also have Jadzi Oracle of Arcavios. Legendary creature, human wizard. Discard a card. Return Jadzi to your owner's hand. Magecraft. Whenever you cast a copy of an instant or sorcery, reveal the top card of your library. If it's an online card, you may cast it, paying, you may cast it by paying one rather than its mana cost. If it's a land, put it on the battlefield. Ooh, that's strong. So basically, if you have another sorcery instant at the top of your deck, this basically just chains together to another, casting another one. Which is cool. For one mana, that's neat. But jeez, eight mana? I guess that's is why like most of these green cards require you to have eight lands, is to get to Jadzi. Right? Journey to the Oracle. For two, two and a green and a green sorcery, you may put any number of land cards from your hand on the battlefield. Then you may, if you control eight or more lands, you may discard a card. If you do, return Journey to Oracle to its owner's hand. Very thematic. This is a strong card, but eight mana? I guess that's what you want for eight mana. Yeah, that's a cool card. Cool beans. I don't see it being played too much anywhere because it's CMC, but yeah, this is a cool card. We have Tempted by the Ulric. One blue, blue, and a blue sorcery for each opponent. Gain control up to one target creature or planes that player controls with mana value three or less. Oh boy. <laughs> this is a pretty strong card in Commander. This is a four mana board wipe, I think, in Commander for the most part. Especially if you want to like black their stuff they're attacking you with, which you're probably going to take their commanders most of the time. Or utility creatures. This is going to be super strong. Yeah, this card is good. I think this card is going to be like a staple for high power and below. You generally want to play lower cost stuff. Well, actually, no. Maybe it's better the higher your meta. So maybe you play this. You probably play this. I don't I don't. High power, right? High power, mid power. Probably within those two. This is a cool card, though. Definitely strong. Got to be careful of this one. <laughs> Definitely, be, I play a bunch of low CMC cards, so this is going to be scary. Super, the fact that it hits Planeswalkers, oof, that's scary. We have Reject, oh, a common counter spell. For one in a blue counter target creature or Planeswalker, it's unless its controller pays three mana. If that spell is countered this way, exile instead of putting it into its owner's graveyard. Ooh, so this is just mana leak. That can't hit, I can only hit creatures and Planeswalkers. Which will probably be important this go around because actually no it's not too crazy this go around because this is a instant and sorcery heavy set or instant and sorcery matters heavy set sort of right so this won't hit too much as what they're saying that's why it's common i don't know i think this card is good it's gonna be good against aggro it's gonna suck as the game progresses but this is a decent card decent card Mortif Mortality Spear. Two and a black and a green. This spell costs two less cast if you gain light this turn. Destroy target non land permanent. What? Okay, it's uncommon. I'm trying to figure out, like, apparently black and green can hit every non land permanent, but also white and black can too. But also, white can just hit every non land permanent at the cost of giving something out like a like elephant token or something so it's like so this is probably like fair the hurdle of gaining life is probably fair for this i'm trying to see if it's equivalent to like the white exile spell we got and this is probably fair this is just destroying an online permanent where the white one exiles it and gives you a three two and this requires you gain two life this is probably fair in comparison i know a lot of people like brag on like white being bad but this is like fair against the white lesson we got 
Which is probably the best, to be fair. I think. Maybe? It's sorcery. Elimination ritual. Two black and a green sorcery destroy each island permanent with mana value two or less. Add green or black for each permanent destroyed this way. Ooh, each non-land permanent. This is probably good in EDH. And EDH is probably destroy all mana rocks and creatures. Maybe some planeswalkers. And CDH anyways. That's a major like that's a majority in CDH. Destroys your stuff too, but you get mana to get play it back. If you have some way of retrieving this is a sweet card, I think, in CDH. High power in CDH is probably might be played a little bit. Other than that, it probably won't be played. This is sick, though. I like this effect. That is a high ceiling. Super high ceiling. Cool card. Cool beans. And it looks like that's the it for the spoilers of for today. Tell me what you guys think about the spoilers. I've got some few things in mind. Um, Elimination Ritual looks pretty cool. Tempted by the Auric, really cool. Jadzi Oracle of Arcavios, really cool effect. Eladros Witherbloom, I think it's pretty sweet. Um, Harnessed Infinity, very cool. Demigoth Titan, I like a lot of these actually, black green cards. Uh, and the Biblioplex. Definitely one of my favorites right here, the Biblioplex, thematically, and just like the idea of it, super cool. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the top three, the Biblioplex, Demigoth Titan. And Harness Infinity. I think those cards are sweet. Anyways, let me guys think about these. Comment down below. What do you think about these cards? Are they good? Are they bad? Are you going to play them standard? EDH. What say you? Peace out.